in light of today being the day of Jumu'ah, which is a weekly reminder of the day of judgment, where we will stand as we stand in our prayers. However, we will stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and there will be a Friday when that day will be established. And in light of this heavy wind that we are experiencing now, as certain things were a sign to the Prophet والسلام, and they would conjure up certain types of emotions in him. For example, when he would see the heavy clouds, those gray, robust clouds, he would remember the calamity that befell, the wrath that befell the people of Ad, who were destroyed by the heavy wind. And so in light of that, I want to talk today a little bit about the hereafter. And my topic today is Akhira state of mind, a hereafter state of mind. How to develop a hereafter state of mind. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, Man kana yuridu harth al-akhira nazid lahu fi harthi. That whosoever desires the harvest of the hereafter, then we shall increase him in his harvest. وَمَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ حَرْثَ الدُّنْيَا نُؤْتِ مِنْهَا نُؤْتِهِ مِنْهَا وَمَا لَهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنْ نَصِيبٍ And whosoever desires, meaning their greater desire, their priority is the, the harvest of this life, then we shall give him from it, but he shall have no portion of the hereafter. And notice that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he talks about the one who is pursuing the harvest of the hereafter, he says, نزد له, that we will increase him, meaning that we will give him more than he would have attained by pursuing the life of this world. Whereas the one who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says desires the life of this world, نعتيه من had that we will give him from it meaning that he will not attain any more than was already decreed for him. And Anas ibn Malik, he reported on behalf of the Prophet ﷺ that he said, whosoever is concerned about the hereafter, again, meaning their priority, their primary concern is the hereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will place richness inside of his heart. And he will bring all of his affairs together. And the world will inevitably come to him. And then he continues, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he said, Whosoever is concerned about the worldly life, meaning their prim primary concern is the worldly life, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, he will place poverty before his eyes, and he will disorganize his affairs and the only thing that he will attain from this dunya is what has already been written for him. And this tells us that no matter if we pursue this dunya through means of, of halal or haram, by disobeying or obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the only thing that we will attain at the end of the day is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already decreed for us. And I remember an individual, he had a, a mechanic shop. And before he actually occupied that shop, he was one who would frequent the masjid. And he was especially on time for the Friday prayer. However, once he started that business, he became so busy sometimes that he would neglect the Friday prayer. And I would try to remind him in a gentle way that this is not the way to get ahead with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is not going to gain us any more than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written for us in the life of this world. And perhaps it is risky business because now we put our hereafter in jeopardy. And it seemed that the more that he would miss the Jumu'ah prayer, the more that calamities would befall him in his business. That one week, a few of the cars, he had them lined next to his business. 
And out of nowhere, a car came and swiped three or four cars, damaging the cars. And another weekend, another car was broken in and the televisions and so forth, everything was taken out. And he would suffer week after week in his business. And so we never seek to get ahead in the life of this world by seeking our, or by sacrificing our hereafter. And this is why the scholars, they said, chase the dunya, Afwan, chase the hereafter, and the dunya, it will chase you. But if you chase the, the, the dunya, then you risk losing the hereafter, and you will only gain that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has written for you. And so developing an akhirah state of mind means that first and foremost, we have to have the proper balance in our pursuit. That the dunya should never compete with our hereafter. Yes, there is a place for it. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he recorded in the Quran, ala lisani rajulan min bani Israel, upon the tongue of a man from bani Israel, who said to Qarun, who was a very extremely wealthy person, he says to him, وَبْتَغِي فِي مَا أَتَاكَ اللَّهُ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةِ he says to him that you should pursue with what, Al what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you the life of the hereafter. However, you should not forget your portion of the life of this world. And this is a very interesting verse for a number of reasons. Number one, the general trend in the Quran is that the dunya is always mentioned before the akhirah. Most verses throughout the Quran will mention the worldly life before the hereafter, and that is because of the chronological order, that dunya comes before the akhirah. However, in terms of our pursuits, this verse and the verse that I mentioned before, it changes the order and it mentions the hereafter first. It prioritizes the hereafter over the dunya. So pursue with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you, the life of the hereafter. And there's so many different verses throughout the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is shaping our mindset. For example, he says, Nay, rather, you prioritize the affairs of the life of this world. However, the akhirah, the hereafter, it is better and it is more everlasting. So number one, prioritizing the hereafter. And number two, having no doubts about the coming of the hour and the meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, Allah Ta'ala, He says, وَأَنَّ السَّاعَةَ آتِيَةٌ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهَا Allah says, and certainly, without any doubt, the hour is going to come. It is on its way. There can be no doubt about it. This is something that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has guaranteed. And it is one of the primary characteristics of the people of taqwa. That about the hereafter, they have developed a level of certainty. And I always give the example to the youth about the fruits of certainty. That if you have certainty about a matter, that is going to inspire productivity. That is going to inspire preparation. So if you know, for example, that there's traffic on a particular road and you have to arrive at a destination beyond that traffic at a certain time, your certainty is going to drive you to make certain preparations. Perhaps you'll leave earlier. Perhaps you'll take another route. But that action and those choices is inspired by the certainty that you have. And the same is true for having certainty about the hereafter. Having certainty about the standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
having certainty that there is a paradise and there is a hellfire. Naturally, we should be activated and inspired to prepare for that day. And the third thing before I break is considering the hour as something that is near. Considering the hour as something that is, that is pending. And over and over, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, for example, that the hour is something that has drawn near and the moon has been split. He says, that the hisab, the reckoning, is something that has come close. Yet the people, they remain in a state of ghafla, heedlessness, turning away. And in fact, it is the characteristic of those who lack faith that they would regard the hour as something that is distant. They see it as something that is far off. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says that we see it as something that is very close. And what's interesting about this is that these verses, as we know, they were revealed more than 1,400 years ago. So in reality, how close is the hour? Or is it about the proximity of the hour? Or is it about developing a hereafter state of mind? Because the one who views something as far away, he will neglect to prepare for it. And I'm sure you hear this all the time, I work better with deadlines. Because when you know something is pending, when something is close, then this would actually energize you. And it's like the question that if you, only, if you knew that you only had 24 hours to live, 48 hours, if you knew when your deadline was on earth, what would you do at that time? And I asked this to even our youth and they said, I would probably confine myself to the masjid and read Quran and seek the forgiveness of Allah. They said that I would reconcile my affairs with my parents and I would seek forgiveness for those who have harmed and I have wronged. And so my question to them is why not today? Why wouldn't you do that today? Have you assumed that your life will be, be extended beyond the evening? That you are guaranteed tomorrow? And it was the mindset of the Prophet والسلام, that he would even advise his companions that when you pray, then you should pray as though it is your last prayer. As one companion, he came to the Prophet والسلام, he said, I limni wa ojis. He wasn't trying, he wasn't looking for a lecture. He said, teach me something and keep it short. And the Prophet والسلام, developing this hereafter mindset in his companions, he said, إِذَا قُمْتَ فِي الصَّلَاتِكَ فَصَلِّ صَلَاتَ مُوَدِّعَ That when you stand in your prayer, you should, you should pray as though it is your farewell prayer, as if it is the very last prayer that you would ever pray. And he said, وَلَا تَكَلَّمْ بِكَلَامٍ تَعْذِرُ مِنْهُ And don't say things that you're going to regret. Things that you wish you can take back, and you have to make excuses for those things. And he said, وَأَجْمِئِ الْيَتْسَ عَمَّا فِي أَيْدِ النَّاسِ And gather enough despair, meaning give up hope and desire for what other people possess of the life of this world. And this is the Prophet والسلام, developing in his companions a hereafter state of mind. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum bima fihi min al-ayati wa dhikri al-hakim aqulu qawlan hadha wa astaghfirullahu li wa lakum wa lisa'i al-muslimun min kulli dham fa astaghfiru innahu huwa tawwab al-rahim Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. For the sake of time, inshallah, this is a conversation that 
I hope to revisit and continue and to go into more and more detail about. I want to close with the statement of Ibn Omar radiallahu ta'ala anhumah. And he said that either am sent either am sayta that when you arrive or reach the evening time, you should never expect that you are going to reach the morning time. You should never consider it as something that for you is guaranteed. And he said, And if you arrive at the morning, don't expect that you are guaranteed to reach the evening. And he said, And take from your health for your sickness, meaning that you should prepare while you are healthy for your times of sickness, and you should prepare while you are living for the time when you will no longer be living. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who make us of those who prioritize the hereafter over the life of this world. And may he develop this characteristic in us in our families, in our community, and the believers around the world. And may he make us of those who will be successful on that day. And may he shade us with his shade on a day when there will be no shade except for the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma ameen.